I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Sean Ryan, the CEO of Glitch Finance. Sean, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here today. Yeah, good Ashton. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'd love to kick off our time together by first just hearing a little bit about your background, how you got into the blockchain space and started Glitch Finance. Yeah, great. Well, funnily enough, in uh, in 2013, um, I, I sold a business and um, we were a premium SMS service. Um, and I invested a small amount uh, into a thing called Bitcoin, um, which I had no idea about. And uh, in 2015, I started to obviously uh, see my investment grow and start to get very interested in the space. And um, from there, I haven't looked back. I'm a big believer in uh, DeFi as a whole and, you know, democratization of finance. And, um, yeah, I, I feel like everything I've done in my career has led me to where I'm at today as a CEO of Glitch Finance. Definitely. Uh, quick and easy. And now I'd love to just hear a little bit more about Glitch Finance before we dive into the details uh, of the DeFi solutions that your team is providing. Yeah, okay, great. Um, well, basically, we're a lay one blockchain. Um, focusing on trustless money markets. So the project uh, was founded out of the belief that, you know, DeFi needs better infrastructure. Uh, so, you know, more people can opt in um, and out of centralized finance. Um, so yeah, basically we're working towards building that um, scalable blockchain that uh, can really have that real world adoption, um, focusing on trustless money markets, which you'll, you'll probably hear uh, a lot within, um, within, within this conversation. And um, yeah, focusing on, a bit of a world first revenue sharing model, which I'm sure we'll touch on at some point as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's very much our focus, um, really working towards that real world adoption and, and really focus on that, uh, you know, that trustless money market space. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And DeFi has really exploded in, you know, the last year to two years. And now you've created Glitch Finance as a layer one protocol, specifically focused on DeFi. Can you talk about some of the problems that you saw within the DeFi space that led you to saying, hey, we should really create a, a layer one protocol focused on these uh, problems? Yeah, definitely. So I think a, a lot of uh, projects uh, with these sort of ideas, um, obviously, we're looking at, you know, the likes of Ethereum at, you know, 15 odd transactions per second. And to really move towards that real world adoption, it's just not going to cut it. Um, uh, so then we, we started looking at, you know, we, we had an understanding that Ethereum would launch 2.0 at some point. So we did first look at a, a potential layer two solution. Um, reason we uh, really shied away from that is we felt that there was a potential for layer twos to become obsolete uh, once Ethereum uh, does, does release that 2.0. Um, and then we saw other projects, you know, around that say, and five, there started to be a few coming out, four or five hundred, and, and really working to that couple of thousand transactions per second, which I still don't feel like, um, you know, the retail investor really understands what that means yet. Um, and they're, they're looking at projects that are claiming to have, you know, tens of thousands of transactions and whatnot. Um, but the finality is just as important as the, the, the you know, transactions per second. Um, and, and the, the the adoption and use now, mm -hmm. um, the layer one for us as uh, layer two, sorry, was it wasn't going to cut it. Um, and then we started to investigate, um, you know, certain infrastructures and ecosystems that we could look at what they were doing and and find a way to do it better. Um, and then yeah, uh, we, we just plan to put a glitch in the market. So <laughs> very cool. And yeah, that's a great point, Sean, about what's going to happen with layer two solutions when Ethereum 2.0 does come out. Are they still going to be needed? Will they adapt somehow? Will they just become obsolete? Uh, so to future proof and create an, uh, an entire layer one solution, uh, which I don't know if you would agree with this or not, but is like sort of competing uh, or, you know, has similar technology to Ethereum where the bulk of DeFi is right now um, is, is ambitious, but it sounds like uh, a more foundational approach to. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Building. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, we, we, were, we were definitely uh, really, really interested in, in competing. Uh, and hence why our unique selling point of that revenue sharing model and focusing mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, you know, the trustless money, money market space. Um, you know, there's, there's so much that comes out nowadays and they're just doing absolutely everything. But 
I'm, I'm kind of starting to feel that if you if you don't stand truly stand for something, you, you risk standing for nothing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that quote. And you mentioned the scalability of Ethereum with DeFi and, and how it's not really going to cut it as it gets to the mainstream. Uh, do you think that's one of the key advantages or uh, you know unique selling propositions of Glitch's protocol uh, D and the DeFi solutions within it? Is the, is the scalability, or are there other things as well? To, to be honest, I think that we've um, we've really thought through this well. Uh, the scalability, yes. Uh, transaction speed, uh, fees, uh, we're kept keeping extremely low. Um, but whilst doing all of that, we've had a huge focus. So we looked at Ethereum and said, okay, why did they get so big and ultimately be so poor? Um, and it came down to the UI UX, uh, the ease of use for a developer to come across and build and deploy on uh, on, on Ethereum. Um, so we've got a huge focus. It's not something we talk about all that much, uh, but we believe once we release our uh, mainnet in the, in the coming months, um, it's, it's really going to really resonate with a lot of developers and, mm -hmm. and that transition across to us is, is going to be seamless. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear. I'm looking forward to that mainnet launch. And maybe you can touch on the technology itself. Is there anything unique about it? What can you release in terms of information about it right now and how it's so scalable, how it's going to be the next DeFi uh, solution in Hub? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's one of those weird things for us. We, we don't want to say too much uh, because what we are doing is is quite unique uh, and, and it's quite, quite, sorry, quite straightforward. Apologies, guys, it's, it's quite late for me here. And so if I, if I trip up, I do apologize. But um, it's we don't want to divulge too much because it will just give an option um, for certain blockchains to make certain tweaks. Um, and then, you know, we're just going to create competition. Happy for them to copy us once we're up and going, and I'm sure they will. Um, but yeah, at this point, we, we keep we keep a lot uh, close to our chest. But yeah, we're, we're full steam ahead and we're, we're very happy with where we're at. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I was researching into the solutions and I saw that the Glitch Decentralized Exchange or the GEX seems like it's the flagship solution that you're going to be releasing. Can you talk about the GEX? What makes it so special and, and why it's going to be revolutionary? Yes, um, I wish we had a couple of hours for this. Um, <laughs> absolutely love our GEX. Um, uh, most, if you compare us to, say, our GEX to like a Uniswap or a pancake swap for argument's sakes, um, we are super focused on uh, very much limited, limited to, to no slippage. Um, and that's been a, a huge focus for us. Um, and second to that, most of these uh, uh, DEXs um, release their own native token. We've actually decided against that. It was a discussion we did have, but we decided against it because we wanted it to be the flagship product of Glitch and be a big contributor to the revenue sharing model. Um, so all, all fees accumulated, uh, you know, then in turn reward the the the, Gex, uh, the glitch holder token holder mm -hmm. so that's the high level uh on on the gex super excited for it um looking forward we're actually going to release them uh release it on testnet quite shortly um just for testing and just as a, a bit of an mvp demonstration for the uh for the investors um but yeah really really looking forward to the to the gex mm -hmm. definitely you mentioned the revenue sharing model a few times is it that the transaction fees primarily from the GEX are going to the token holders? Or is there something else that makes it super unique? Yeah, so it's it's um, very model, very much modeled off um, uh, and very similar to uh, dividends um, on a traditional for a traditional stock. Um, so basically the way the revenue share model, uh, model works is it's uh, rewarding the stakers and holders. So. Um, having the GEX uh, as part of the revenue sharing model uh, and, you know, the adoption that we feel we're going to get with the, the limited uh, fees that we're going to have. I mean, uh, the, in testing, I, I can tell you that the um, the fees, I think the biggest, uh, the, the highest amount was $0.31 cents, um, wow. uh, for, for a transaction. And that was for a $10,000 trade. Um, so... Um, once people get wind of this, of how cheap they can uh, they can trade, um, we're going to have mass adoption, 
and in turn mass adoption means you know it, it's a little fee but it's going to end up a lot of fees accumulated accumulatively mm-hmm. uh to the revenue sharing model and back to the glitch holder very cool that's impressive 31 cents is a lot less than uh, i've paid in, in some ethereum transactions i'm not sure if i've ever paid 31 cents uh for for an yeah, ethereum I, transaction I, I don't even i don't even want to talk i mean uh yeah a couple of months ago i i think i paid up to a hundred odd dollars for a for a transaction so for sure um yeah i mean how many of that is 300 transactions on on the gex definitely and i also saw that there is a staking model involved is that right and can you talk about that a little bit more uh we are still finalizing uh, a few things around our, our staking um uh but yeah it, it'll be something that we'll release uh out by a medium article in the coming weeks um, so yeah, if, if everyone's following us, stay tuned, stay tuned for that quite exciting news. Sounds great, Sean. And is there anything else to talk about the, the glitch finance token? You mentioned that they're getting the revenue share, uh, that there will be more on the staking when that comes out. Uh, is there anything else to talk about regarding the, the glitch finance token, how it works within the ecosystem and provides value to the users? Sorry, I just missed that last bit. You were cutting in and out. No worries. I was just asking. If it, how it provides value to the users and throughout the ecosystem for the token. Yeah, are you in, re- in reference to the GEX or the revenue sharing model as a whole? Uh, well, the whole platform really in, in all of the ways yeah, that the okay. Glitch Finance token works. Yeah, sure. So uh, I will reference that revenue sharing model again. Um, <laughs> so stakers stakers are able to obviously stake, uh, stake their tokens, which uh, the revenue uh, sharing model rewards rewards for staking. Um, so, with our extremely low fees, high scalability, and and speed, which is is I won't say second to none, but pretty pretty good um, and, and pretty pretty reasonable and super competitive. Um, the UI UX uh, of the platform, the adoption that we're going to have from from developers, more DApps means more transactions, means more fees for the revenue sharing model. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's it in mm-hmm. a nutshell on a high level. Definitely. Great. Thank you, Sean. And you mentioned leading up towards mainnet uh, and coming out with, you know, on your Medium blog, some more information soon. Can you give any snapshot or timeline of when approximately the mainnet's going to be coming out? I know, you know, it, it, times always change, but maybe you can give a glimpse into what the timeline is supposed to look like. Yeah, look, um, it's something that we're really pushing for, uh, you know, within this month to next. Um, but it's some with with the current market market conditions um, and my need to perfect this uh, and just get it right. Uh, it has been a, a decision that has come from myself to push back. I know a lot of uh, a lot of holders uh, weren't weren't they <laughs> didn't really accept it, and I appreciate where they're coming from and whatnot. Um, you know. They're, they're all there to make money, um, but you know I, I'm very sure that we'll see them back at some point um, because of, of the growth that we we do have in front mm-hmm. of us. Uh, but we are looking at at Q4, um, and yeah, it's just Q4, uh, no potential hiccups. Um, I could have done it Q3 uh, with potential hiccups, but I just thought with current market conditions and and where we're at and what we're actually doing, we're not. We're not one of these pump and dump. Like we, we, we get asked all the time, you're pump and dump. We're a lay one blockchain. Uh, we're building, you know, financial infrastructures to, to enter the real world. And, and, you know, yeah, that question just astounds me at times. But mm-hmm. yeah, mainnet Q4, um, really looking forward to it. I, I can't wait. Uh, we're battle testing internally. Super happy with the results. Um, and yeah, moving forward, cannot wait to get it out to, to everyone. Definitely. Great to know. And looking down the road past the mainnet launch, you know, years down the road when DeFi has really matured as well, what do you think will be one of the key factors to success for Glitch Finance to be one of those go-to solutions that DeFi is really sitting on top of? Yeah, okay. Um, I think um, one thing that is unique about how we have developed this uh, system, uh, we have planned for the future. Um, I made some notes notes for this and um, a a question that I believe was going to come up is how do you achieve your 3000 uh, TPS Um, and it's 
it's actually a lot higher, but there's dependencies around it. So we don't want to be one of these blockchains that says we can do 50,000 transactions, but can only prove a thousand. Um, so we're building for the future, but we're releasing in stages to create mm -hmm. efficiencies uh, around the platform. Um, so the day we release mainnet, uh, mainnet, which I see as V1, we start building uh, V2 uh, and start working towards continually improving, continually growing, continually scaling. So people are going to be super impressed, and I, I know they will with what we release, um, but then, yeah, it's on to stage two, stage three. So always being competitive, always looking forward. There's always new infrastructure, new ideas that are coming out. Analyze them, take the best, the best. We've got a great team of guys behind us. Uh, that are you know super forward thinking. Um, so yeah, it's V1. Everyone's going to be very happy, and then V2 moving forward. Mm -hmm. It never really ends, but it's a very fun journey. So uh, I'm sure you're looking forward yeah, to the main net launch. Is. <laughs> definitely is. Can cannot wait. So for the viewers that are looking to follow along, learn more about the Gex, see the Medium blogs when they come out, and follow along for the main net launch. What's the best way for them to get involved in the community and to learn more? Guys, um, just jump onto the website, Finance. It's just below my, my title there. Um, uh, everything you need is there. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, follow us on Telegram. Uh, we pride ourselves uh, in, in being as you know, involved in the community as possible. I try to jump in uh, as much as possible to answer any questions. Please come in and ask questions. If you, if you don't understand something, it doesn't matter if you're new to the game. It doesn't matter if you've been around for five years. Come in, ask the questions. You'll get the answers. And, yeah, we look forward to having you a part of the community. Sounds great, Sean. I will leave those links in the description box below as well. All the best with Glitch Finance moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Ashton. And, yeah, really appreciate it. And, yeah, thanks, everyone. And we'll see you around.